Hello everyone, my name is David, I've been an editor and a channel manager for Space Toast for about a year now, and teaching new editors has been my job for a good part of that year. In this video, I will try my best to convey what I think makes a good editor, what I think makes an entertaining video, and in general I will try to showcase my own workflow and uh, my approach to creating my videos. In this video, I will not be talking about the technical side of the subject as much. Learning how to cut, how to do masks and the rest of the basic software understanding has already been covered a thousand times, a million times on YouTube and uh, there's nothing more I can add to that. Instead, I want to share my own insight as a video reviewer and an editor myself. So today I will try to cover the basics of editing and I will also try to show examples of the most common mistakes people make. As with pretty much anything else, you gotta start with the basics. Without a good grasp of the basics of editing, you simply cannot make a good video, and no amount of different details and polish you add to it can save it or really improve it. A good analogy I can give is drawing. Without knowing the core principles like perspective or shadow and light, trying to learn more complicated stuff like human anatomy, for example, makes no sense. Every painting you do will come out amateurish or mediocre, and same principle applies to editing. Recently, we have been getting a lot of questions about Blender or 3D in general. One question we have been getting a lot more recently is do I need to do 3D to apply for Tobias? It's a perfect example of people trying to learn a lot of complicated stuff that they think will make their videos better without first getting a good grasp of the basics. Now I'm not trying to gatekeep you from learning 3D or anything like that. I'm just saying that a 3D renderer or a cinematic shot with a leak director won't save your video if you fuck up everything else. So in my opinion the two most important basic principles of editing, and also, coincidentally, the two things people tend to fuck up the most are value and clarity. Pretty much everything else is either connected to these two or it won't necessarily make or break the video, but rather add to it. Don't worry though, we'll get to the exciting stuff later too, but first we need to get these two out of the way. The idea of value is relatively simple. Everything that you add be it a complicated edit or something simple like music, zoom or even a cut, should add to the experience of the video. It should have inherent value, otherwise it shouldn't be in the video. Now, this idea might be simple, but it's not easy. It might be very difficult to judge your own work in terms of value. That's why in Space Host, for example, we have people reviewing videos. We ask each other for second opinion on edits, all because sometimes it might be almost impossible to clearly see if something you edit has value or not. Pretty much in 90% of the trials we get, I see the same misconception about Tobias videos and how they are made and what makes them good. Someone rather inexperienced might look at it and see just a bunch of memes slapped on top of Tobias playing leak. People hear loud music, meme sound effects, and they think in general the more the better, when in reality it couldn't be further from the truth. Every single sound effect you hear has a purpose, be it emphasizing something happening on the screen or making fun of it. You should always ask yourself if what you just added to the video has any meaningful value or not. This is probably the biggest pitfall of new editors I see in the trials that we get. People just tend to edit for the sake of editing. And doing that is the exact opposite of what I'm trying to explain here. It just shows the lack of understanding of the core principle of value. Now, before we get into the examples, I want to give a little disclaimer. I will criticize the trials we get, and at times it might come off harsh, but please keep in mind that it's not my intention to roast the editors or anything like that. I realize that a lot of them are probably beginners, or maybe a lot of them never edited in that style, they're just trying things out for the first time. Now, here's a perfect example of what I was talking about in terms of value and in terms of editing for the sake of editing. It's one of the trials we got for Rambe. What it boils down to is the editor just took a bunch of meme sound effects he heard here and there and he just tried to fit in as many as he could. Fight back! Fight back! No! No! Bego, bego. So, after you watched it, you gotta ask yourself a question. Did any of the things he added really increase the entertainment value of those 10 seconds? Personally, I don't think so. 
I would honestly rather prefer it was just source footage with music playing in the background. Now, this is one of the most egregious examples of breaking the rule of value. Usually it happens in short moments throughout the video. Someone just adds a first meme, sound effect, here and there. Now doing that once or twice doesn't really make the video much worse. It's just a forgettable edit you don't pay attention to. But a lot of times it happens throughout the video again and again and again and combined. All of these little first jokes bring the video down a lot. Now, it's important to note that having a lot of sound effects doesn't always mean the edit is bad. They just have to work with the video and make sense contextually. Another great example of not following the value principle of editing are edits that break the pace of the game. Usually it's an edit that takes up the entire screen. The video stops, the edit plays, and then the video continues. When you do edits like that, when you stop the video entirely and it tracks to show the viewer an edit, you're basically telling the viewer, whatever was happening in the game is not as interesting or entertaining as what I'm about to show you. This meme I came up with is worthy of me completely taking you out of the game because it is that funny. And you always have to ask yourself, is it really that funny? Does making this edit worth completely halting the rest of the video and taking up 100% of the viewer's attention? Before you do edits like that, another thing you can ask yourself is, is there a way to implement this edit in a way that will make it worthwhile? Here's an example of a similar edit done by one of the Tobias editors. <laughs> Nasu could have probably just slapped the phone clip on top and called it a day, but he went the extra mile. He put the phone leak background in the same exact spot that the in-game moment is taking place. He added a shadow from Cyan. Sound is done perfectly and everything is timed very well. Good exercise when editing is, after you are done with the edit, remove it and see if the video gets worse. If it does, your edit is good, and if it doesn't, you might want to reconsider. That's basically value summarized. Much like with value, the principle of clarity is deceivingly simple. Everything that you add to a video must be very easy to understand, very easy to digest for an average viewer. It sounds obvious, but trust me, plenty of people mess up clarity in their videos to the point where it becomes basically unwatchable. A lot of different things go into clarity, like is the edit that you did understandable to most of the people watching the video, or is it just a visual mess? Is the storyline of the video understandable? And a lot of smaller things like readability of the subtitles, camera work, sound levels, and so on fall into this category. Unlike value, clarity is very straightforward. It's very closely tied to your technical skill as an editor. There's not much to show here in terms of examples, because as I said, the concept is pretty straightforward. But I'll show the one that stood out to me the most. This game is going to be very volatile. Look at their team. What's interesting and I guess kind of funny about this edit is that even if I slow it down, the clarity of it doesn't really go up. If whoever edited this video took a step back and looked at his video for a second, he would have clearly seen that the edit is not very well done, it's not very clear. It's kind of hard to understand, especially for someone who's watching the video for the first time. And that's basically clarity summarized. Take a step back and try to look at an edit you did as a viewer and not as an editor and try to see if everything is 100% clear and understandable. Originally this is where I was going to end the video, but I decided to talk about this final point that's very important to us when we're hiring new editors. And this final point is originality. It's good if you have it, it's good to strive to be original, but in my opinion no one is 100% original. Everyone is influenced by everyone else, especially in creative fields, especially in editing. All the cool edits you see come from this editing zeitgeist and pop culture and everyone has access to it, so I don't think someone can claim one edit all to himself, even if he quote-unquote came up with it. Now, creativity is a different thing. You can copy an edit one-to-one, -one, but if you are creative you will find a way to put your own spin on it, make it funny again even if it was used a billion times. Will Smith slap edits are a good example. Are they original? No, not really. Is the first one original? Again, not really. Everyone who's into editing instantly knew they were gonna do something with it. Are some of them creative? Most definitely. Point I'm trying to make is, you don't have to always try to come up with original edits, but if you do copy an edit you've seen somewhere else, try to put your own personal spin on it. And that will truly make an edit your own. Now, to better show off why I'm even bringing this up, I will show you some examples of edits from different trials made by different people.
Night, night. Here I come. Here I come. Help me. Help me. Help me. Help me. Power, do your job. No. Power, do your job. Fuck. No. Power, do your job. These few examples are taken from the entries I downloaded to make this video. There were a lot more examples like that. Especially I remember the Tower Do a Job edit was done at least 5 or 7 more times. You have to understand that we get a lot of new people trying to apply for a job at Space Toast, and watching through like 100 trials like that, a lot of videos start to blend together. It's the same cookie cutter stuff done again and again and again, which is not always bad, but it just doesn't make the viewer remember the video. It doesn't make them want to stay on the channel and to watch more content. And as a result, it doesn't make people want to hire you as an editor. But when someone does something actually creative, it instantly stands out. Even if the edit itself wasn't done particularly well, it makes whoever is watching through your trial stop and actually consider you as a potential hire. Tower, do your job. Fuck. Hey, fuck this shit. I'm jerking off. And that's it for today's video. In my next video, I will cover the more complicated principles of editing and share my own personal workflow. I will also upload the entire project for this video I did for Tobias, so you can download it and pick it apart to see how I did some of the edits you see in there. And if you made it this far, here's my own personal thank you for watching this video to the end. Stay tuned and have a good rest of your day.